to Enter the Glory Zone with Dr. Edith Davis on 94.1 FM, Wave 94. Uh, Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas. We're almost there. And so I just want to once again continue um, my um, discussion from the previous broadcast and about building your life on the rock and having peace on earth. Yes, peace on earth. And of course, as we get into the holidays, everybody's ripping and running, buying gifts and loving on people and cooking and all sorts of things. But there's also a time where some people are having, you know, a little bit of depression. They might have lost someone the Christmas before that they love and that they cherish. Or we might have people that are homeless, um, non, got animals that are homeless with them. It's just, it's, um, it's, it's important that we keep our eyes on the prize that we understand we who are believers, we who have accepted Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that he left us here to be salt and light. And as I said in a previous broadcast, light has no lips. <laughs> so your life should radiate the, the construction principles of the carpenter. Your life should radiate the word of God. You should fall in line with God's word, which in turn will enable you to be, uh, I guess I say a good steward, right? A good steward of, of what God has given you on this earth and not, and being a good steward enables you to bless who others. So, I wanted to continue um, our conversation that I had previously, which is why is it so critical that we um, live under the word of God? Because this is an accursed earth and we have an enemy and his name is Satan. I'll try not to talk about him too much. But anyway, he, he he's come to kill, steal and destroy and every bad thing on this planet is 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 from him. He's orchestrated it, you know, and and so but all the good things, all the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, healing and health, riches and all that is from the Lord. And you can have those things, but you've got to what? Accept. You got to get from under the curse. And all the way you can get from under the curse is to accept the free gift of God the Father's only begotten son's blood. He died for every sin, past, present, and future of everyone on planet Earth, right? So he died for everyone. And so, but what's the issue? The issue is you have to accept his his free gift. So the free gift of God that he gave his only begotten son so we may live is called grace. And he also gave us a measure of what? Faith. And with that faith, you extract the free gift. And how does that happen? You've got to believe it and receive it. So there's a little interchange there where you've got to believe it and receive it. And as I talked about in previous broadcasts, how do you know that you received it? You receive it because... You, your whole disposition changes, your mind, your will, and your emotion, you rejoice. It's like you, you got everything you needed for life, life and godliness. You got everything you needed to have the abundant life and you are living it and you're, and you're in overflow. So not only are you blessed, but everybody around you and in your sphere of influence gets blessed. You know, I think about Oprah. Winfrey and her relationship with Gail. I mean, that is a overflow relationship. What a lot of people don't know is that Gail was Oprah's boss. Gail was the one to help position Oprah with the Oprah Winfrey what show. And then 
and over the years they've they've weathered the storms of, of friendships and but there was a um, story that I share over and over again or, you know, Oprah and Gail are hanging out like girlfriends do. And Oprah's going through her closet and Oprah pulls out a coat, sticks her hand in a coat and a wad, pulls out a wad of what? Cash. Then what was interesting was Gail had a, I think it was an electric bill or she had a um, pass due electric bill. So she really needed that money. And guess what? Oprah could see that on Gail's face. But Gail said no. Why? Because Gail recognized. That's one thing about wealthy people. That's one thing a lot of people don't know about wealthy people and people that have been blessed with riches and wealth, right? Is that it's hard for them to have genuine, new, great relationships with people because people always want something from them. So it's hard for them to have these relationships, right? With people, because people in the end always what? Want something what? From them. So let's get back to Oprah and Gail. So Gail said no. She could recognize that Oprah really needed her girlfriend Gail to be there for her. And it's not about the money that Oprah had. So, you know, in the end, God opened up the door and the, the light, the lecture bill was paid. You know, and the years, some time went by and girlfriends, they still hanging out and Oprah's in, um, Gail sitting, I guess Oprah's in the kitchen, Gail sitting at the counter and they're doing whatever they're doing and go and, and Gail softly says on that boy, her voice, Lord, I wish I knew what it felt like to be a millionaire. Oprah overheard it, but didn't say a word because she knew that if she said anything, Gail would shut her down, right? So what did Oprah do? Oprah put a million dollars in Gail's account. You understand what I'm saying? That's receiving. That's receiving. So um, you got to recognize that Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit love us so much, loves mankind so much that he gave his only begotten son, Christ Jesus. And we're going to celebrate that on Christmas Day. Now, is that officially the day Jesus was born? No, but we do. We, we just we picked a designated day. So a lot, some people believe that Jesus was actually born in the spring around Passover, right? With the Passover lambs. But anyway, so the long and short of it is, is that Jesus was born and God wants us to have the abundant what life. He wants us to accept his only begotten son's death so that we can be reconciled and come back into fellowship with the father. See, God created the atoms and God created mankind because God had a, he, he loves family. He loves communion. He loves relationship. The Father, Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are really close. They, they commune. They are, they are one, right? And he wanted to duplicate that on earth. He wanted, he wanted a family. And Satan, of course, came in and disrupted that because in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God, right? <clears throat> There is no sin, right? And Satan introduced sin. He introduced sin, and because of that, and because the Adams were the federal head, that means they were the first, that sin, they, God said with his word, if you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Now, it took them almost a thousand years to die, Physically, but spiritually, they died immediately. Spiritually, their spiritual eyes were shut down. And guess what? They took on the spirit of their new God, which was Satan, which was used to be Lucifer, the angel of worship in the kingdom of heaven. So he fell and then he, of course, he took mankind with him. So 
the long and short of everything is, is that because of the sin element, man, the Adams were now separated from the father and all of mankind, which was they were the seed for all of mankind. They were separated from the father. And the only way that they could be restored was through the blood. Life is in the blood, right? So his only begotten son, Christ Jesus, the word of God, said I, that he would take on the assignment and that he would come and he would die for all of mankind's sins. And guess what? One drop of God blood, because Jesus' father was the Holy Spirit. And so... Jesus' blood was God's blood, right? Because the male decides the um, the sex of the child, and he also decides the blood type, right? So, so what ended up happening was, you know, Jesus' blood was God's blood. So that's why he was sinless. He came to this planet and he tried, well, he tried, he did show us the way that we were originally supposed to operate on planet Earth, right? We were to, we were to use our mouths to create. We were made in God's image. So we were, our mouths was to use to create things. We were, um, supposed to walk on water. We had, Dominion over the wind and the waves, and we also had dominion over matter, over um, um, all the elements of the laws of physics and chemistry and biology. All of this, we because we were made in what God's image, and because we were made in God's image, we were supposed to operate as the custodians as the governor of planet Earth. God had given us dominion over this planet, but when we fell and fell, and there's three areas, Satan attacks us in these three areas, and he hasn't changed, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So what's the lust of the flesh? Appetites. And God is, is no, it's nothing wrong with being hungry, but it's how you fulfill Your hunger. How do you fulfill your appetites of your what? Your physical body. The appetites of your what? Your, um, your mind. The appetites of your will. The appetites of your emotions. Right? So, how do you do that? Jesus, you know, when Jesus started his ministry at 30, right? He was baptized by John the Baptist. Now, that was Jesus cousin. You guys didn't didn't know that. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And John the Baptist was not only in the line of the priesthood, he was in the line of of Aaron, which means he was designated to be a what? High priest. Because it's only the lineage of the Aaron which was Moses' brother that was, was given the uh, authority and dominion to be the high priest. So when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by his cousin, right, John the Baptist, it was not a coincidence. Basically, the way the high priest transfers his authority and his dominion as high priest Is through baptizing the future high priest. So John the Baptist was under the Levitical high priest. He was Aaron high priest under the Levitical priesthood. But Jesus was trained, he was under Melchizedek, a whole nother line of priests. So, so when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, he transferred the highest priest's um, lineage to Melchizedek, which Because Jesus did not come from the line of the Levites. Jesus came from the line of Judah, right? And Judah means praise. So King David, all of you, the line of Judah. So as we walk through this holiday season, we need to under have a clear understanding of what really is going on here. And what's going on here is that God the Father 
had gave his only begotten son, Christ Jesus. And he gave him through the line of what? Judah. Through the line of what? King David. And so, and Jesus was a high priest under the line of Melchizedek, which is a really big deal. And so, it's it's so powerful that, you know, we, Christianity is the only religion where God came down to earth to be with us, to save his creation. God, Christianity is the only religion where God died for his creation, whereas Satan wants you to die for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all the other, everybody else wants you to die for them, but God died for us. So Christianity is the only religion that is bathed and saturated in love. We don't, we're not interested in chopping off nobody's head. We're interested in loving, loving everyone. So it's, um, it's a very powerful time. Um, Christmas is a very, Powerful time where we, um, as believers, get an opportunity to be light, um, to be salt and light, and represent our Lord and Savior, and be there for people during a time of what? Some people are going to be in a time of what? Need, right? So, so I wanted to share that with you that. This is a time for us to accept, if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and have that abundant life, to be free from, from sickness and death, to be free from the kingdom of darkness and all the evil things that go with it, to, to be transferred into the kingdom of what? Light. To be transferred into the kingdom of love. And so... um, that's the things that I think about during these this holiday season. And I am just so grateful that I had parents and even um, my two fathers, Sam America and James Williams. They they believed in Christ Jesus and they transferred that to their daughter, Edith Gail Williams Davis. And I'm transferring this to my children. Jordan Aaron Davis and Joshua Caleb Davis and, and all my family and friends. It's, um, it's a powerful thing to, to be, to accept God, Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And it's a powerful thing that God came from eternity, came from eternity, infinity, came to this physical domain and guess what became our savior and our lord and so he came to destroy the works of the enemy he came to demolish everything that satan has set up he came to destroy sickness and disease he came to destroy lack and poverty he came to destroy broken relationships he came to give the abundant life. He came to give healing and health. He came to give riches and wealth. He came to give healed relationships. He came to give love, tender kindness and mercy. Oh, yes. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just want to say thank you. So he came to restore us back to the Father, not the not the um, father that Satan tries to portray out there to people. Our father, Daddy God, Yue Vahe, is a loving God, is a good God. And he wants us all to have the abundant life. He wishes that none should perish, but he will not force you. Whereas Satan don't care. He will manipulate you. He will try to get you. He will get you through... Um. Drugs or, or money or, yeah, money or food or whatever. He, he don't care how he gets you 
addicted or, or, or tied to him. Whereas God cares. God, you have to do it with your free will. You have to accept his love freely. Freely he gives it, freely you have to receive it. And so it's an awesome, awesome thing to, to be in this holiday season. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's an awesome, awesome thing to be in the holiday season. So, yes, we, we understand that, um, we have a, a loving father, Daddy God Yuevae, who sent his only begotten son, our loving savior and king, king of kings and lord of lords. And then he sent the Holy Spirit so that we would not be left as orphans when he went and ascended back up to heaven and now sits at the right hand of the father, continuously interceding and praying for us to this very day. After the holidays, the Christmas holidays, come my favorite uh, holiday, which is Easter. Easter. So I'm looking forward to that. And I just um, want people to know and understand that we serve an awesome, awesome God. And that we have... He wants us to have the abundant life. He wants us not to have the sickness and disease. He does not want us to have the lack of poverty. He doesn't want us to have broken relationships. He wants us to live the abundant and glorious life that his son, Yahshua Mashiach, died on the cross to give us. And why is that so imperative? Once again, as I was saying earlier, God cannot Heaven does has no sin. So the only way you can enter into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven, is to be sinless. And the only way you're going to be sinless is through the blood of Christ Jesus. He, ta- he died for all of our sins. And so that's why it's such a big deal that Jesus was the only child on planet Earth that was born to die. Right? So... All this other death and corruption, all of this came from Satan, the fallen angel, Lucifer. Um, He didn't want to go to hell by himself. That's right. Hell is real and it does exist. And God created hell for Lucifer, for Satan and his angels. God did not create hell for humans. But Satan, of course, Wants to have company. So he tries to trick and deceive. And like I said, if you're not covered, covered by the blood of Jesus, you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can be deceived by Satan. You can be deceived. So that's kind of what's been going on with me. And I just want to... Thank God that I've accepted Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank God for my godly parents and the godly influence that I've had in my life. And I thank God that um that I was raised by Esther Williams and James Williams. And I thank God for the prayers and um of Sam America. And so as we enter into this holiday season. I, I really, I'm praying for peace on earth and goodwill to all of mankind. And so as we approach the holidays and we get closer to the first Sunday in January, I want you to please, um, join me and, um, at the steps of the old Capitol, which is the red and white awning in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, it's, 3.30 p.m., the first Sunday of every month. It will be our 50th, 5-0, our 50th prayer walk. So that's that's going to be powerful. And I'm inviting you all to join us as we pray for the church, uh, Church of Tallahassee, Florida, Church of Tallahassee, Florida. We pray 
for Tallahassee, the city of Tallahassee. We pray for the state of Florida. We pray for our nation, United States of America, and we pray for the world. We pray for the peace of Israel, the peace of Jerusalem, and we just pray. And so we will be um, doing the prayer walk the first um, Sunday in January uh, at 3.30 p.m. And um, I'm inviting all, and also we'll be close to February the 29th to March 1st, where we will have the National Science Foundation Micro Spiral Method Summit. And I'm excited about um, this summit, and I am looking forward to glorifying God in this summit. And the Micro Spiral Methodology is a download from the Lord that helps, um, well, I, I you know, particularly was focusing on young children, but really it's from the cradle to the grave. Basically, it is a methodology which helps us to learn and retain, not only learn and retain, but to understand the knowledge that we're receiving. And so this microspiral methodology uses um, something, a methodology where it's the past, the present, and the future. Concept, knowledge, and skills are um, transferred um, to uh, individuals and it enables them to do well. So, yes, yeah, so I'm excited about that, um, sharing that at the, um, the National Science Foundation Microspiral Method Summit. I'm looking forward to um, all the people who, that will be participating in this summit. And I just um, am grateful that um, God is um, faithful um, to his um, people and that um, he's faithful to me and giving me this opportunity. So I'm inviting everyone, all the listening audience to join us um, on February 29th, probably a start at 9 a.m. And um, it'll be um, at Florida A&M University at the Al Lawson Center. And we'll probably end around 4 or 5 p.m. We'll, we'll close it out and then we'll open it up again on March the 1st and close it out again. So I just inviting you all um, to join us with the Microspire Method um, National Science Foundation Summit um, in Tallahassee, Florida. And um, I'm just excited about being used by God and, and trying to figure out a way to transfer um, this knowledge to um, the, the schools throughout the United States of America, throughout the universities and colleges and universities and community colleges throughout the United States of America and eventually transfer this throughout the world. So um, I, of course... I don't want to not end this broadcast without giving people the opportunity to um, be introduced to my Lord and Savior, my King of Kings, my Lord of Lords, King Jesus, Yahshua Mashiach, and Romans 10, 9. That is, if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Thank you for once again joining me on Into the Glory Zone. Holy, happy, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, and thank you for joining me, Dr. Edith Davis, on 94.1 FM, Wave 94, Into the Glory Zone with Dr. Edith Davis.